guys welcome aboard and thank you thank you thank you for joining us my name is Felipe Pires I like these guys in this picture by the way <laughs> yeah 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 so my name is Felipe Pires I've been working as a principal security engineer and security research at Supinovation Supinovation it's a Brazilian company and the focus in uh, exponential growing and to give a awesome experience to the developers guy you know and uh, the peoples and i am a security research and instructor at uh, hacker Secure or hacker security whatever and uh, this company is responsible to provide some courses of the uh, you know pen testing and uh, about the red team blue team and the purple team and another different courses right so i am in hacking is not a crime advocate it's an awesome 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 project in the the idea in this project and to you know to try explain more about this kind of uh, concept and this culture because hacking is, is not a crime exactly hacking it's a mindset hacking in a, you know it's a lifestyle and it's about creative mind right so that's an, our idea about this project and i'm a part of the staff team of the defcon group in sao paulo and as you can see i love to be part of the many different communities because I believe this, it's very, very, very important to be part of this community because you can share the knowledge, you can share, you know, the different subjects and topics, you can give the, uh, the knowledge, you can receive as well. So, uh, and I'm, I've been served as a professor in some universities here in Brazil and some colleges like Afiapi and Mackenzie and UniBTI and UNIC, this kind, this name of this university. And uh, I am founder and instructor of the, the principal, the main course in, in HackerSec. The name is Malware Analysis Fundamentals, right? So here, my contact is in Twitter and Telegram. And this is my email. If you'd like to send me a message to talk with me, you know, to share knowledge that I, I really appreciate. And it's the project that I am participating. This is my homepage, my web page. Right, so here are some open source project projects that I like, and I will explain more about the OrSec. And here I I've been working, you know, in another different projects like Rich. It's open source tool allows you to create and store and share, automate securely, and some uh, formulas. Right, and another project is Peagle. It's another open source platform. It's a framework based on server-driven UI that allows teams to make a change to native mobile or web application. It's very, very interesting. And another one, it's a Charles. It's another open source tool that are deployed quickly, continually, and securely. All the teams simultaneously validate different hypotheses with a specific groups of the users, right? So here we can find another presentations or talks that I did in some events. And another in here some articles that i have been published if you'd like to see right so let's talk about our summary or our agenda right so first we understand who is a threat because i would like to put all those in the same page right i think it's very important and after that we gonna talk about more analysis and we we need to understand we go to uh, understand about the structure of the pdf we are I will do the demo in the end of this this explanations. In the end, if you have any questions, I will hope to answer to you. Right. So, who is threat? It's very important thing here because in security we have many different explanation or you know about this uh, word, the simple word, right? So I like to I just chose one of this right based on according to this ISO right. So threat is a definition has a put potential cause of the incident that may cause harms in the system and organization. And here we have an interesting point. Maybe threat can be it's a software attack or a theft of intellectual property, identity theft, or sabotage, or, or, or no, and information extortion are example of the information security threats. As a result, most of the many organizations uh, chose active threat hunting to practice to defend their organization from the network uh, no threat. So that's a good point here. So maybe you can think now. So Philip, so actually the threat it's almost everything. Maybe as yes, of course related to a softwares 
or attacks. Of course, we have a physical attack as well. So in this case, it's almost different, but in the end of the day, the concept is almost the same, right? We need, we, the attacker will, uh, um, you know, attack something, a software or a people, right? That's an important thing here. So, so the first step when, when I, when I need to, when I will execute some uh, analysis, the first idea I have, of course, the a single, I have a sample, I, because I don't know if malicious is not, right? So I have a sample and I need to analyze this. And the first step and the first idea is to identification step because I have a sample. I don't know if it's malicious or not. I don't know if it's a malware or not, or it is, I don't know, it's document malicious or not. So this is a simple definition, right? Malware, it's a malicious software, and maldoc, it's a document malicious. So when I, when I did identify this sample, I can choose what the best method that I will apply in this binary, for example, or this file, right? So I will use an static analysis or dynamic analysis, right? This is just a concept. After that, I will prepare a report because this is a very important step because when after this, the uh, I execute this analysis, I can prepare a report because of course, this is part of our job, right? or part of the rule of this the analyst or the Freddy Hunter or something like that. So this report I can present to my manager, to my tech lead or, you know, wherever but I can uh, explain all those steps that I, uh, that I executed when I made this analysis, right? And, but Philippe, if I have an, a report, what can I do with this information? So the next step, it's very important because I can improve the defenses mechanism because at the end of the day, when you have, or when you do this analysis, you can improve your defenses mechanism because you will discover what kind of steps or way the attacker use it in your environment. So if you see that attacker may be uh, using the bypass technique to, uh, you know, to export your firewall, for example, you can uh, do different, uh, you can improve the better configuration, you can use another different, or the best practice, you can uh, see the configurations on the settings in your tools that you use or the product that you buy, for example. Right. So after that, you can create the good word, you know, you know, the cyber threat intelligence you can build it. It's very interesting because so if you have a small company, maybe it's impossible if you create the cyber threat intelligence. But today we have many uh, different softwares or open source products that can help you to, to build it, you know, and why you can create or why you, you, you could create the cyber threat intelligence, because if you learn how this behavior of the attacker, of course, you can prepare, you can prepare more your defenses, you know, the mechanisms. This is a very important here. And of course, because the cyber threats or the, the we have a training in cyber resilience, resilience, we have, we need to have this because during our presentation now, probably we have another guy, another attacker or a third actor creating a new different attack using a different techniques, right? Because of this, we have this life cycle, not life cycle, but the cycle of the, the attacker phase, right? So you can use in this method. So let's talk about statistic analysis. So what is a static analysis? So it's very interesting. Usually this is the first step that the analyst is using because usually the statistic analysis describes the process of the analyzing a program code. It means you have a code, you can analyze all those parts of this code. If part of this code is malicious or not, or you can analyze the structure of this code. If in this, inside this code, we have a structure. If this structure has a called some function, for example, you can find a DLL, uh, what function this, this DLL is calling inside the system operation, for example, and the program itself doesn't run at this time, right? Of course, depending on the program that you can be used, but usually it's this, this, this uh, method, it's more safe, right? Because as I mentioned, doesn't run at this time. You using um, like a manual command to try understand of this code, right? And when you, talk about the dynamic analysis. 
it's another part, another different method. Usually, it's based on solely on behavior. It means in the, the interaction that the malware has when it's executed or made a malware or mal, or mal doc in this case, uh, this analysis also known like a runtime analysis. It means you execute the malware inside a controlled environment, right? Or not controlled environment, but can you use an, uh, uh, some tools or product maybe, you can execute this malware inside this, this product, this code, not called this tool, you can analysis of the behavior inside of this control environment, right? So it can be easily automated. There is main sites today that already perform analysis of this malicious artifact, right? So using um, a small concept called a sandbox. It's similar that you have a virtual machine and you will put this malware inside this virtual machine. And after that, we will see all those behavior this malware has inside this virtual machine right so let's uh, let me see here yes we, we have before talk about the the physical analogic structure i would like to share something here with you about the base because it's important if you remember in the beginning of this presentation i talk about the identification step right so the idea here is to try understand about this point so here i have many artifacts right i have an amazon i have a view invoice i have a linux i have a pdf this is a folder not a file and i have here read pill docs so and so i have a many different file here with different extension so what this what common what common i can use here to try and find any uh, information about this file so i think many people know about this file command right so i can execute malware ma file command to try identify what this sample is right so here i have an amazon microsoft words right 2007 let me try looking inside another for example view it's a good friend view it's a pdf file right so let me see here about the linux doc text maybe it's a text so in this case, it's not a text, it's a elf file. So it's it's different here because I have a another uh, you know interpretation here. So let me see another file resume about PDF. It's a PDF, perfect. So let me see here uh, in a Windows. If I have another here, I have a sample file, sample. So here I have a PE32 executable, right? So as you can see here, I execute a file command. We have a, a identification process, but I have we have here some interesting point because I have I execute here file Linux doc text, but actually is not a text file, right? It's execute file. So how it's possible? Because near we we need to understand about the base. That's my point here. When you execute this file command, in this case, file determine the file type. But what is the actually the correct information that this command are using when they executed in your environment? So here it's the manual. I know probably you don't like to read the manual, not not only in the in the Linux platform, but you don't like to read any different manual. I don't like, by the way, but I think I suppose that you don't like, right? So. But here we have important information to, to understand the base, right? Here we have important information. So let me explain more about this. The mesh tests are used to check for file with data in particular fixed format. So probably we have a specific, for, specific format to try to find or to understand what kind of file is. It's not, of course, not based on the extension, right? And here we have the explanation. This file has a magic number. Here is the key, right? So all or all those files has a magic number, right? So this magic number, right, is stored in a particular place near the beginning of the file that tells the Unix operation system that file is a binary executable. So here we have a simple and very important explanation. So 
all those file has a magic number, right? And all those magic numbers are stored in particular place near the, the game. So, but how it's possible to understand more of this? So here I made this very interesting thing to try explain more about this magic number for you, right? So I downloaded the file command, not actually not a file command, I downloaded the database responsible to offering this information to the operational system. Of course, when you have in the, in, in the, in the Unix platform, as you can see here in my machine, I'm using the this um this binary is compiled inside the, the the system operation of course in my case hi here i downloaded this this uh, source code and i sir and i download the database of the file command right here so let's see very interesting information here let me looking looking more inside the javascript so here we have the file of the JavaScript, of course, and we have the definitions, some definitions important when I execute the file command and this file command looking inside the database to try find the magic number of the JavaScript file. For example, let me put here this information. I will copy here and I create in this simple, um, the simple file here, PDF, PDF doc text, right? And I will write here and I will put the information in malware. Now, actually, I will do the different. I will put just a malware, right? And I will save and I will look the PDF, right? Actually, it's a text, as you can see here, right? It's a text. But now I will change this information in the beginning because I learned now, or oh, I read, I, 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 I read now this uh, in the month of the file that all those files has a magic number in the beginning, in the particular place, right in the beginning of the file. So I will save here and be note when I execute the file, take a look what happened. This is a, of course, is a text, but in this case, the magic number, it is identified by node.js script. Take a look. I will change another thing here, I will put just a simple sign up here and I will save again and let's see what happened. Ooh, it's a Python script. <laughs> Very interesting. So let's change something here. It's a PDF, move to pdf.py and I say a mode PDF, PDF. Oh, yeah. Let me change here the privilege to PDF, right? And let me look again. It's a PDF, right? So let me call Python here, Python 3, PDF here. And bam, we have a syntax wrong error because it's not a Python, right? It's very interesting because it's not a Python, but if you see in the beginning, so let's see here. Cat Python, take a look here, the some regex. Ah, because of this, because I put here the magic number. As you can see, we have a different here, a different information like a similar regex. You can have a regex, you can see the information here that you can use here. For example, let me copy here and I will change one more time. Here, it's a Python, right? Mm -hmm. It's a Python. I will cut here and I will save. And probably you see. In this case, it nah, key. I'll take a look. It's very interesting. It's in this case, it's different because probably. We use just just a only like a, a policy inside the, the database, right? Not a policy actually. It's one of this rule. It's, I think it's better this rule, right? So let me change the last the one more and the last time here. 
Uh, oh yes, it's an honor. I will cut here. I will put the percent PDF because this is our challenge here today. And I will save here and let's see what happened. Whoa, it's a PDF document. But in the station, it's a Python. So all those, so I did it during this presentation. Basically, let me talk with you. I did it during this presentation because you need to understand all those bases. As I showed during this presentation, you see here, uh, we saw here actually the file or the identification step, it's very, very important, right? Because you need to understand inside of the file. Probably you know about the file common, but the idea is here is uh, it's try to you know explain you what how it's important to understand all those bases, right? Because for example, let me share my screen one more time with you here. So let's let's look inside this one more time here. I think you know, but probably so maybe some people don't know right here. Uh, let me look inside this mod here. We have here another interesting, interesting, very interesting information. Ah, here. Uh, okay. Whose format, or in this case, the matching, the mesh classes are used to check for files with data in particular fixed form. Right. I read. I read. Read. The canonical, the canonical example of this binary. It's a um, binary executable compiled program because it's inside of the system operation, right? And H doc out file. Whose format is defined in elf doc H? Here's another format and possibly execute doc H in the standard included directory. So let's see, because here I am, I can see, I will copy this format right so let's see if you let me return our yes uh locate this file let's see so this binary actually it's included it's in this path user include l right are you read are you read here so take a look what is important here this file, I think you can read, can read. This file defines standard elf times. So take a look what is important inside of this file, right? So this file defines standard elf types, structures, and macros, right? So here we can find the correct structure of the elf file. If you read below, if you see here, you can see the the number of the bits used right the words the words x words and here you can see the interesting form interesting information the elf file headers i know this presentation it's about pdf but take a look about the man or so the information that we found it and then found it inside the map <clears throat> the elf file header oh, man, oh better this is the file the the elf file header this appears at the start of every elf file it means appears at the start not ever start that is in the beginning of the elf file what started in, in what started in the beginning in this case we have in the beginning of the elf file we have a uh, 60 bytes right or bits in this case and we have uh, this is structure like 60 bytes right in the first array of this um, bytes is called e ident and you will find the magic number and other information inside this 16 bytes we will find all those informations you see so magic number and others information what kind of information you can see here let's see okay this field is Fields in the eIdent array, you will find you identity. You can find the file identification byte, the first is zero. The second file identifier is E. 
the third is L, and the four is F. I will show you another thing for you here. Let me open this file Linux 32, right? And let me using file, I use a file, right? And if I use here X, uh, XD and 32 Linux, right? Okay, no, it's not Minos. Not Minos. Take a look here, the four bytes, the first is zero, the second is E, in this case it's E here, as you can see, the, the third is L, it's L here, right, and the four is L, you see? You can see? So that is important. You need to understand this because I read the map of the file and I and I found many information important of the structure of the file. But if I didn't read, if I didn't read this information inside the map, you know how it's possible to understand the basis. Of course, I need to run, I need to study, I need to to read. Actually, I need to study about the, all those bases. This is a main point here. When you talk about the Mara analysis, when you talk about the red teams, pen testings, uh, defense team like a blue team or ready hunting teams or sock teams or whatever teams, you need to understand all those bases, right, people, right? So let me return here my presentation, right? Let me return here the, the structures, right? So let's talk about the physical and logical structure about the PDF. Usually we have a four parts, the header, usually in the, the, it's very common in wherever binary. We have a body, we have a cross-reference table, and we have a trailer, right? So this is the main part of the PDF. In the beginning of the file, we have a version number, right? And you have uh, objects, you have a, a, a images, you have a cross-reference table, which is a location of the object inside it's in the file because it's random, right? The access, and we have a trailer. It's a location of the certain objects inside the board. It means you have a mainly body, and you have a many objects inside this body. And all those bo all those objects is or are in this case are reference one and another, right? So let me show you the demo to you. So I will use here um some tools to help us in in this demo i will execute the pdf id it's very known tool it's created by dj stevens right and i will execute this in linux i the, if you see here the first information that um we found in this demo as you can see here we found the header as i mentioned the structure right so the second information here we found the 15 objects Right, so we have an 15 objects, and of course we have an and this the same 15, right? So maybe you have here, not maybe, you have two and extremely, because we have a two extremely, and here we have a cross-reference table. And if you see here, we have others important informations, of course. All those informations are inside the DDA Stevens blog, right? You can find all those explanation more inside the, the, the blog page of the DA students, right? But here, the slash or slash page, slash encrypted, slash object stream, streaming, slash JavaScript. Here, we will find interesting informations. All those informations are inside this mainly part of the PDF. So here, I have an important tip for you. Probably when DDA Steven created this tool, uh, he studied a lot about the PDF structure. And of course, 
he analyzed probably many malwares and he found many information inside this this uh, samples yes and when probably of course i'm you know supposing because i'm thinking the idea of the base right so all those slashes are information inside the main point the main object and these tools only uh, just will possible to create it because probably the DDA Steven, the, the, the main creator, right, knew about how this tool works, right? Or not tool, but how this PDF works. It's the main point here, right? So let's continue to see here. And we have here one page, and we can see here we found five JavaScript inside the PDF, and we have an open action. Open action is a very interesting point here. If you read in the website, if you if you read, of course, um, we will see the open action is responsible. Just the, the 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 user don't need to click many times in the PDF file. When you have this open action inside the PDF, the only action that user needs to do is download the file, for example, from the email. If user receive an email and click in this PDF and download in in, in for example, in the machine, in the Bitman machine, or in the, the in the own machine, because they have this this file has an open action. When the user download this file, this file will execute this open action. In this case, it will execute something inside the PDF, right? So I can suppose, of course, if have uh, an open action, and if have JavaScript inside the file, and this file just have an only page. And we have some information encrypted. Probably it's malicious, but I don't know exactly what is malicious, but it's malicious. I was equipped after that the PDF parser. It's another tool created by DJ Stevens. I I set the the run because I would like to see all those information inside this PDF. And here I will explain something to you. As you can see here, the header. And after that, you can see here the object, the object one. And here we have object one, say catalog. And here we can see the referencing. This is, here's a very interesting point because the object one is referring object two, object three, object four, object five, six, and seven, right? And uh, what this means in this case? What is what you know? Here it's interesting point. Do you remember when I I explain about the structure? If we have we have the object the, the body inside the body we have objects, reference, or inside or located inside the file, right? So many many times many times no, but all those files or those objects are reference one another as i will show you here so take a look in an object one we have a, a javascript and we have an open action oh let me return here we have an object in this first step we, it's an open action is these open actions after this action executed in the victim machine is executed or will be executed at JavaScript. So here, there's a advance that is malicious because the user, when downloaded the file, after that is will be executed an open action, and after that is uh, will be executed the JavaScript, right? So let's continue to see. So okay, we have an object two, three, four, five, and take a look here. Let me return one more time here because I have a, here another information, important information here. Okay, take a look here, object four. In this case, object four references uh, object eight and nine, because if before we just have an object one until seven, but now we have an object eight and nine, two more objects, right? So let's continue. An object six, four, and here we have another reference. Object seven, we have a, another reference. An object ten, and inside the object ten, we have a JavaScript. You see? Okay. So 
And here, let me put in object nine, take a look what happened here. We have an object four because, you know, one of these, one another, one of the another ref. We have this reference between this the, the objects. And here we have another reference, 11, object 11. So we have a beginning, this is the one object, and now we have a, the one until 11, right? But when we executed the PDF ID, do you remember how many objects we have inside this file? 15. You don't, need, you, no, don't forget this, right? Here, take a look. We have the object 10. Inside the object 10, we have a object, another reference, object 12, right? And we have, a, probably here, we have a JavaScript. Okay, take a look here. In object 11, we have, uh, oh, here we have another information, different, contain, contains a stream. So probably we have uh, something inside this stream, right? And when do we have this flag, flag the code? Because we need to decode <laughs> the information, right? And here we have a length. It's, it's like a, a, a size of this, this kind of stream, right? So maybe when you see here the size, it's small, okay? And in, inside of object 12, we have another reference in object 13. And inside of this object 13, we have a what? A JavaScript. So let's continue to see what happened. And here, take a look. Contain streaming object 13. And you have the same flat decode. But here we have a big, big size. 31, 5, 30, 151 is a big, a big size, right? So here maybe I need to look in more deeply, right? So, okay. And we have another object 14, the last, the maybe or almost the last, right? And because we have a 15 objects inside here and we have here the object 15. Okay. So we need to see more deeply of the 13 objects, right? So next step, next, next step, I will execute a PDF TK. It's another tool. Actually, this tool is not from the <laughs> TV, but it's another very interesting tool. I will basically here the comment I will execute. I will collect the output of this sample, all those information, because I will extract of this information here, and I will uncompress all this information inside this then doc text, right? Okay, I will execute this. So now we need to see what information we have inside this them. And take a look what what we will see here. I can see all those information. And take a look here. Here we found the first technique used by the attacker. So here we can see the JavaScript obfuscated. So what what the next step? I need to desobfuscate of this information, but here the attacker use this technique, right? So I will see here some informations. I will I, I see some parameters that the attacker use it in this demo in this case. So I will copy the code, and I need to of course desobfuscate this code to try find some information, right? So I will set this. Uh, file in HTML. Why? Simple, because when we execute any web applications, usually they use in the JavaScript and HTML and CSS and something like that, right? So I found here the evil parameter and I will use in this evil parameter to try this obfuscate this code, right? So basically I will see inside this parameter and I will change to the document writer, right? Because a uh, document writer actually, because I will need to, I will, the idea here is to try read what information you can find inside this JavaScript obfuscated, right? So take a look what happened here. It's very, very nice what happened here. So after that, I gave the privilege access to, to access this information, of course, and I will execute this payload.html. So take a look now what happened 
here in our demo. I will show you how you found the var, a variable payload. As you can see here, we found a payload, right? So what, what means exactly in this case? We found here a payload malicious. So first of all, we have a PDF file. Inside the PDF file, we have an open action. This open action after that will uh, execute the, the JavaScript. This JavaScript to us, what? Obfuscated. Inside the JavaScript has a payload. Payload is responsible to, you know, uh, load this payload inside the V2 machine. And this code is responsible to call reverse, to call back to the CNC in this case, right? So now we have a payload responsible to, you know, load this information or, or to download this information, actually, to download this information inside the victim machine. And this payload, in this case, this payload, as I'm showing to you, will be responsible to call to the CNC from the attacker or the threat actor. So now I could to finish my analysis, but here we have an interesting point. If, let's suppose, if I have the payload, I, you know, I can try to find this uh, uh, IP responsible to this uh, attacker, right? So after that, what I see. So let's see what kind of information I can try and find. So I see here some information, right? Like a, a, a percent here and some numbers maybe. So the next step, I created another file here, right? I called it real payload. Perfect. And I would generate, I, I copy and paste all those information inside this file. And I using the, um, the set to cut this percent here because my idea is to try to clean the file. Take a look here, the, the, the var, you know, the, the parameter, and I cut some information. And here I cut many others, uh, like a, a slash, like a percent, and I copy this information, and I arrived in a Unicode code here. So now I have this Unicode code. It's another technique, because the attacker in this case uses, it's, of course, it's, it's um. It's not new, but it's old. Uh, the Unicode code based on EC, uh, UCS. Yes, yeah, yeah, UCS. Yes. No, EC2 UCS. Yes. So it's Unicode. It's basically two bytes different of the ASCII. It's because ASCII is very common now. So uh, this is here. It's very interesting. So let's. I, I use in many Linux platforms. So I will see now another platform, Mozilla, in a Windows machine to, to show you. So here we have the same code, right? So we have a key, all those percent here I need to cut that I did in the Linux machine, right? So I cut this information and here I have the pure, uh, you know, pure Unicode. So after that, so do you remember I have, I had a, a JavaScript obfuscated, I just obfuscated this code, and after that, I generate a payload. This payload, I found the Unicode code based in UCT, in, in, e, in UC2, sorry. And inside of this information, I generate an exafile doc binary using this tool, Mozilla, right? So after that, take a look what I did. I using a short search, it's another tool provided by DBA Stevens. I execute an exa file, my file that I generated here in this case, and I call a TTP protocol. And take a look here what I found. Basically, I found the CAC from the attacker. You see, this attacker uh, was in this case in Estonia, Europe, right? So now we finish our presentation and I will show you here my contacts again on the social medias and just to finish the presentation. So we, let me talk with you. 
we we had a fast a sample because we have a PDF file. So we found uh, a JavaScript inside the PDF file. We have an open action. We had an open action inside this this file. This PDF ha had an open action, and this open action called it a JavaScript. The JavaScript has uh, or had in this case um, a JavaScript obfuscated. Inside this JavaScript obfuscate, we had an, a payload. This payload, it will be downloaded on a Vitman machine, right? And this payload has a Unicode code, right? It's, it's uh, old, of course, but it is another technique. And, and after that, I generate um, a hexa binary, right? And after that, I use a char to collect the HTTP protocol to find the CAC up from the attack. I mean, in this case, a command and control, right? Responsible to set or to send this attack into the Bitman machine. So we finish our presentation. If you have any questions, so please let me know. I am available to you. Thank you one more time for stay with me during this presentation. So again, if you have any question, I am available available to you.